media family, but it is also a loss of leadership to the global community of those who understand the importance of justice, truth, and righteousness for all mankind. I once had to introduce Esther King at an event where he served as keynote speaker, and I asked his daughter, Tammy Wayne, who was, I think, in high school, uh, at the time, how she would describe her father if she had to introduce him. And Tandy said to me, this kid, she said he is the courage and strength of Nat Turner, the conviction of Denmark Vesey, the eloquence of Ida B. Wells, and the fight for freedom and justice of Malcolm X. And I said, Tandy, <laughs> He loved to shape community center. He was a giant among men who now takes his royal seat among the ancestors. We just heard who Esther was, is, and will always be. You've heard that in the last two days. Well, Lee, I love who Esther was, I love who Esther is, and I love who Esther will always be in all of us. In us. Because I'm not letting go. I want to see Esther in you. I want to see Esther in all of us. And I'm going to look everywhere I go to find that Esther. I'll see him watching with us. I feel his spirit sitting in the office when the DA's office said that he was talking about this injustice that was perpetrated recently. He was there. So I'm going to love the Esther of the past, the Esther of the present, and the Esther of the future in all of us. On behalf of Shade Community Center, I want everybody to understand that Esther played a major role in Shade Community Center being what it is at this present time. Esther played a major role. And we look forward to meeting with him at Shane next week. One of the rooms. Yeah. Yeah. I can say I'm not going to let go. I want to see him, experience him, and all of us. Moving, the struggle continues. It's not over. So take it to another night, to another level. And that's how we show our love for Esther King. The struggle continues, brothers and sisters. We love you, Lee. We love the whole family. And I mean, that's a genuine love. A real love. Thank you very much.
he wants to do, and rarely express any regrets. Our hearts are heavy also. Our, our heavy hearts are lifted by knowing how many lives he's touched and how important he was not only to us, but to the community at large. Thank you. You know, Esther really did touch the community at large. Not only did he protest and fight to make sure that justice was done, but he also entered into the police academy as a teacher. What many of you may not know is that for 21 years, I served Houston as a Houston police officer, but I did it because I got permission from Esther, the boy on the Wiley, and other elders first. We knew that there needed to be some people inside that would represent what we were striving for and what we were fighting for. And Esther was able to come in and teach young police officers what, to, what the African American community wanted and expected from them. And for that, they may never fully grasp the magnitude of what they had right at that moment. But he was, able, he was able to impart integrity, wisdom, knowledge, and a trust that they would do the right thing. I am so thankful. And I know that each person sitting here is thankful to God for having had the opportunity to know a man like Esther King. And so we acknowledge God for the things that he has done for us by giving us this gift. We acknowledge Esther's mother for giving birth to such a wonderful, wonderful man. We acknowledge
to whom much is given, much is required. That whom in this context is us. We've been given much because we've been touched by Esther King. So going forward, much is required of us. God bless you. A revolutionary leader that Esther and I both admired, Che Guevara, once said, true revolutionaries are guided by great feelings of love. I think this describes Esther King. He was my friend, my brother, my comrade, my teacher. And when I think of Esther, I think of marching against apartheid in South Africa. I think of Gina, Louisiana. I think of Ida Delaney and Byron Gillum, Jose Campos Torres. I think of Leovis Johnson. I think of protesting the KKK, speaking out for immigrant rights, aiding Katrina survivors. I think of Clarence Branley, who is still fighting for his reparations from the state of Texas. I think of Shaka Sankofa and Francis Newton. I think of Chad Hawley, the Angola Three. I think of the struggle to break the U.S. blockade against Cuba. And I think of stopping the attacks on our city council person, Jolanda Jones. I think of demonstrating in front of KPFT when they allowed the new practitioners of apartheid, the Israeli government, to have a voice. And this year, when we have our 12th annual march to abolish the death penalty, the bus that we take to Austin is going to be called the Esther Express. <laughs> We're now living in a new economic times where the banks, the corporations have recovered, but we haven't. We've got a jobless recovery, but what the heck kind of recovery is that? There's going to be new struggles ahead, and as we enter these struggles, Esther will not be with us physically to face these challenges, but we will carry with us his courage and his spirit into these battles. To win the liberation struggles Esther fought for and dedicated his life to, we need the broadest solidarity of all working folks, of all nationalities and genders and sexual orientations, from Acres Homes to Africa, from Third Ward to Gina, from Houston to the execution chambers in Huntsville, from Jasper to Gaza, Esther's pulse beat in unison with all oppressed peoples. His heart opened to all people fighting for their liberation on every continent of this planet. I'd like for you to raise your fist and say presente when I say Esther's name. Esther King, presente! presente. Esther King, Presente! Esther King! Presente! Thank you. Brothers and sisters, on behalf of the Hawkins and members of the National Black United Front, we want to bring you greetings. No justice? No, no peace. peace! No justice? No peace! What do we want? Justice. What do we want? Justice! What do we want? Justice! When do we want? Now! When do we want? Now! How we gonna get it? Now! How we gonna get it?
you we have one other who wants to say a word. This is Esther's cousin. Is that all right with you? Oh, she said it's okay. So you can do it. Given God and honor to God, obedience to my family. Esther was our oldest cousin. Amen. Amen. The, the thing is, I've heard on last night people talk about his community activists. I want to talk about his family activists. On this year, every year, we have a family reunion on the fourth weekend in June. Esther, as we go to our, my grandparents' gravesite in, in Magnolia Springs, he would give a talk. And I'm, many of us were there this year, and I came in from California, and when, I, when we were at the gravesite, Esther said something. He talked about what we always talk about, our grandparents, who's there, where we started from, and he always gave a history lesson. One of the things he told me that I didn't understand was that it's a little smokehouse at my grandparents' place. And he told me, and he told all of us that that is where they lived. The room was no bigger than a jail cell. And then he told me something that was very amazing. He told me that it was a person by the name of Khan. Some people call it Khan Appliances. My grandfather was a sharecropper for Khan's. I learned that this year from my cousin, Esther Lee. And while Esther was there, he also told us, look around us. Because somebody that's standing around this circle might not be here next year. Little did he know. The morning that we got up to make it to my grandparents' place on that Sunday morning to continue the family reunion, I was there with Esther. We were some of the first grandchildren to get there. And I saw Esther do something that I hadn't seen because I hadn't been home in a while for the family reunion. He was working courageously, he was working very hard, and I noticed he was sweating a lot, and after I heard of his home going, I realized that he had an urgency about himself that day. Esther knew that this was his last time, and sometimes when you know it's your last time, you get busier than busy. I want to say not only was my cousin a sister, was an activist in the community, but when he spoke, we all listened. Everything I heard from him was a history lesson. And I just want you to know that he did a lot in the community, but we got a great big family, amen, that's full of love. Amen. A great big family that's full of heart, full of strength. And I, and I know that he gained all that strength from my grandparents, his mother, his father, and that voice he had, I remember Uncle David, when we used to play dominoes at the house. He had a strong voice, and, and like Esther, he argued you to the point, amen? Amen, I just want the family to know to lift your heads up, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty.
Oh! Uh-huh. 